Dear ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to welcome you all here in the merits of International Online Marathon dedicated to our research of memory. So this is Scientific Research Memory Institute and I am the journalist Irina Lepetuk and I am glad to present you the interview with the worldwide memory champion, Dr. Johannes Mallow. So, hello, thank you for inviting me here today and I am Johannes Mallow, Dr. Johannes Mallow and uh, I am in the field of memory since 2003 and in particular I am competing in memory competitions and I won the World Memory Championship in 2012 and I'm still one of the top memory athletes in the world and broke a lot of world records and uh, so this is my expertise, memorizing stuff very fast, uh, very accurate and with special memory techniques. So it's not a gift, mm -hmm. I'm not gifted with, and talented with memory. There are some special techniques and methods which everybody can learn and uh, yeah, this is my expertise. Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, you are the memory worldwide champion. And you're, telling, and you're telling me that actually memory is not a gift. It's something the person really can train with. Is it true? That's true. Yeah, there are special techniques, memory techniques. And they are very, very old. They are already 2000 years old or more and uh, has been used by the old Greeks and they, give, they, are, they were able to give speeches, like two hour speeches without any notes or something like that, just using their memory for their notes and so the techniques are very old and everybody can learn these techniques. You know, today for the contemporary person saying like something without notes, without notepads, without PC or laptop, it's something well, strange, because we are so much accustomed to all our things that are helping to remember lots of stuff in contemporary rhetoric. But before we are going to speak uh, all, um, about all these techniques and things, could you please share your personal viewpoint according to the issue of model of memory? How can we perceive the model of memory? I'm, I'm, not an, I'm not a scientist on memory, but my personal view on this uh, model of memory is, I think it's also a scientific view, it's like there are three parts of a memory model. So there's mm -hmm. the, the ultra short term memory, mm -hmm. there's the working memory and there's the long term memory. And these three are very close connected. Mm -hmm. So that means, for example, the ultra short term memory is very short, short term memory, like for one second or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you walk along, along the street or something like that, you hear a bird singing, you are uh, smelling a cake or something like that. All that stuff is going to into, into your ultra short term memory, but the brain starts filtering the important stuff because you don't have to memorize everything what you see, you just have to, have to memorize what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And all the information which are important to you are going into the working memory. And now you can, in the working memory, there the information are stored for maybe uh, a couple of minutes. And uh, now you can work with these memories and talk about them, reflect them, and so on. And very important information, which you want to learn for a long time, these information are going to the long-term memory. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so the long-term memory is obviously the most important part here, or one, because it's so important because if you want to talk to somebody, you need information from your past. You need to um, re reflect from your past and get information from uh, things you had, had uh, you you um, yeah had before or something like that. Mm -hmm. So these three types of memory are very important: working memory, long-term memory, and ultra short-term memory. Am I correct to presume that actually you are using this model of memory in your activity, or maybe you're using something else? Um, actually, I'm the yeah. The memory techniques are more to work around this model of uh, a memory because in the it is well known that in the working memory you can just uh, mem just store like seven information at the same time or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, if I tell you a number like seven, eight, six, two, five. Nine or something like that, then you may be able to memorize seven digits or eight digits or something like that. But then it will be difficult if it's more than that. So this is working memory. But the memory techniques helps you to work around like that because I'm able with the I'm with the memory techniques. I'm able to memorize a 500-digit number in five minutes. Mm -hmm. 
this is not possible with normal working memory. So the work workaround is you have to store the information differently. Like in uh, one technique is to store the information in little stories, create little images, mm -hmm. and, uh, making up crazy stories, funny stories, something like that. Because your brain is much more, um, yeah, it's much easier for your memory, for your brain to memorize funny stuff, stories, mm -hmm. image pictures mm -hmm. than uh, numbers, because numbers are sometimes very boring. Sure. Well, uh, Dr. Malo, do you believe that uh, our contemporary knowledge about memory is sufficient enough? Or maybe there is something else we cannot describe with contemporary scientific basis? Like, for instance, the memory of ancient lives or previous things the person has never participated in. What do you personally feel about it? I'm pretty sure about it, because if you look at people, people are getting older, they're getting like disease, like... Uh, dementia, and Alzheimer, and such stuff. And this is really a big issue for today's people because people are getting older. And we are still not able to heal such disease. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of stuff we can still learn about memory and how memory works and how we maybe can prevent in the, in the future, prevent such disease. And uh, so there's a lot of stuff we still can learn about memory. Sure. And well, let me please ask you one more question. Sometimes memory is perceived like something mystical, like something phenomenal. And it cannot be described with certain medical aspects or neuroscience or brain aspects. How do you feel? Which scientific discipline would be better for the research of that mystical part of memory? Um. Personally, I'm not sure if there is really a mystical part of memory mm -hmm. because I, I'm really a scientist, scientific person. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of things can really be explained with memory models. Like you have these neurons and networks of neurons, mm -hmm. and these networks of neurons store the information. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that everything uh, about memory can be solved by science in the future. Sure, I'm pretty sure about that. So I think neuroscience is really the way to go, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, maybe there could be some other research uh, areas, research fields, which can also could, which also could contribute to the field of memory research. Mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. Because actually, again, speaking about con contemporary scientific disciplines, especially about deep psychology, well, there are numerous viewpoints. Okay, I see. So. Actually, I'm not very familiar with these theories, so mm -hmm. I don't uh, um, speculate here and uh, make something up. So I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm not I'm not so familiar with this topic. Uh, do you feel that neurophysiology and neuroscience, these scientific things, are enough for describing the memory issues and the memory model and providing us with the correct memory definition? I think these two are very important and also mm -hmm. psych psychological stuff and so on, but maybe also other uh, scientific uh, stuff like uh, physics, quantum physics and so on, because there's mm -hmm. so much going on in, your, in our brain and so much which is not known yet about, about material, about uh, the brain, about uh, yeah, quantum mechanics and so on. So there's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot to learn uh, even uh, and even other disciplines can contribute to this mm -hmm. uh, art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you personally believe, uh, Dr. Malo, that the center of memory is in our brain? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how can we verify that fact? That's a good question. Um, I mean, neuroscience is, uh, has, has trying a lot of stuff like doing MRI, like doing mm -hmm. fMRI studies and so on trying to visualize the parts, the areas of the brain which are active uh, when, I, when, I would, um, would, when I would be uh, in an MRI system and I would uh, remember a story from my past, there would be something active, there would be an area which is active uh, mm -hmm. in the brain. So I think there are pretty, sure, pretty good evidences about uh, this topic and that the, that the brain, that the memory is really inside the brain. Mm -hmm. But what can we do with the fact that, for instance, when we go to morgue or to emergency when people are dead, they have brains but they have no memory? 
Doesn't it con contradict to our contemporary perception of memory at all? I mean, if if I this this example uh, is a very so, so as a live person is very different from the dead person because sure. uh, in the live a live person's brain there are some activities there are neurons there is uh, uh, yeah there is activity and in the dead person's brain there is no activity so. Memory is a, the, the memory isn't just something physical. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's something like activation. It's like neurons um, uh, connecting neurons, connected neurons, networks, and so on. Mm -hmm. But there has to be activity, like electrical pulses, and so on. And this is this is memory. Memory isn't something like you can cut out or take it out and bring sure. it somewhere. It's uh, it's an activity. It's electric pulses. It's connection between uh, neurons and so on. By the way, if you were asked to present the definition of memory, uh, what would be your answer? How could you describe the memory? Personally, uh, your personal viewpoint, not necessarily yeah. as a scientific one. Um, so memory is... Uh, so everything what I have learned in my past during my life uh, goes into my memory, more or less. I don't... I cannot remember everything, but a lot of facts from my past, and memory defines my personality, of course, mm -hmm. because uh, um, everything, everything which is connected to my personality comes from my memory. And if I look around, like in this room, everything what I see is from the past already. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so memory defines, the memory of a person defines a person somehow. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is very interesting. Sure. Uh, yeah. So it's it's very individual. Memory is uh, unique for every person, and the memory defines a person. Mm -hmm. And one more peculiar question: um, reflecting in the merits of uh, scientific um, issues like the anthropology and phenomenology, some people say that not only human possesses memory, but also certain objects, like for instance the pieces of architecture, like great temples or cathedrals, they are also the parts of memory. So you mean a building can have some kind of memory? Yeah, there are people who share this hypothesis too. Okay, um, I'm, I don't think that um, you can compare it with a human memory or something mm -hmm. like that. In so, science, and, and, um, it is called objective I, memory, by the way, the memory of the object. The memory of the object. So, um, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that, but what I could describe like mm -hmm. that would be, if you have a building, for example, and over the past, mm -hmm. uh, there will be something, there will be wind, and there will be bad weather and everything. So, the building will, will, will not be the same after some years. There will be some changes on the surface, and there will be some damages, and so on. And these damages, these changes of the surface, this is of course uh, some kind could be some kind of memory because mm. uh, there are changes on the building because of the circumstances. And that's, I think, that's the same like a human brain memory because mm -hmm. you learn something new. There will be there will be a change in your brain in your memory, and uh, these changes are are actually the real memory. Could we presuppose that, for instance, when we are researching the world around us, we are actually researching our memory? Um, our memory, I think our memory is a way to perceive the world and to describe mm -hmm. the world. We need our memory, mm -hmm. but I don't think that we are describing our memory when we are, um, when we are researching the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, as you are uh, acquainted with mnemotechnics, as you are acquainted with ancient Greek methods, by the way, uh, ancient Greeks, they didn't believe that the memory center is in brain, but still, they somehow used their techniques that help us to receive brilliant results. What do you think about this? So, you mean a ancient um, speakers and so on, they didn't, mm -hmm. think, they didn't think that their memory is in their brain? Mm -hmm. How did they manage? I, I think it's a trial and error thing because uh, mm -hmm. um, if you, uh, how I, I'm not sure how they really invented it, mm -hmm. but Cicero, Cicero was one of the first uh, one of the first people who persons who uh, wrote about uh, memory techniques, and I'm not sure how, sure how he came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's a normal thing that if you 
um, yeah, if you look at your daily life and you can, it's easier to remember things which are more visual, which are connected to some specific location or something like that. So it's there, the technique is there. Somebody has to invent it or um, yeah, explore it somehow. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like with everything, uh, some guy will be the first guy to, uh, to see it and to, uh, to invent it somehow. It's like with everything else, like with, uh, like with, book, uh, with books or with something like that, or electricity, electricity, everything. There has to be one guy who is the first who is doing it. Mm -hmm. By the way, Dr. Mal, which techniques, which memory techniques or memory things do you use in your personal life, do you use in your activity? By the way, you're a worldwide champion, I guess. Yes. You have certain things to share. Um, I, I use the method of loci, the memory palace, very often. Mm -hmm. uh, this means uh, you are creating uh, a journey through your apartment, for example, through your house or through your environment. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the front door, then the desk, uh, the refrigerator, and the window, and so on. So, so I use this technique very often to memorize like keywords for a speech, or uh, even for voca learning vocabulary, for example. And uh, I also use the method uh, major system for memorizing numbers. So these two methods are used very often in my daily life. Mm -hmm. And the same they applicable. They help you, right? They help me, yeah, they help me everywhere because if I want to memorize like like a speech or if I want to talk to people about specific things and I want to uh, memorize things from the speech or mm -hmm. from the talk and uh, or I would like to go into a job interview or something like that and want to say uh, certain points, then I memorize that then beforehand and then, um, yeah, I'm more self-confident in the situation because I have everything in my head, everything I need. And I use them very much during my studies because you can learn stuff very, very fast mm -hmm. uh, if you use memory techniques. How did you manage to become worldwide champion? Was it difficult? How did you uh, succeed? It was very difficult for me mm -hmm. and it, it took me several years. And yeah, so how, how did I manage it? I, I think it's also a personal thing because I, I personally I have a muscle disease and uh, this muscle disease forces me to use a wheelchair today mm -hmm. and um, this started when I was around 14, 15 years old. Before that I was able to walk and run and everything mm -hmm. and suddenly uh, my muscles become um, yeah, weak and uh, mm -hmm. this was a problem, not just physical but also a mental problem because mm -hmm. if you have such disease it's a problem for you. And then I discovered um, memory techniques and I went to memory competitions and I saw I can do that. If mm -hmm. I cannot play table tennis anymore or run or compete in another way, but I was able to um, compete in this memory world and I was very good from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to see where, where it goes and how, how, what can I achieve in the future. So mm -hmm. I trained more and I motiv motivated myself to say I want to be the German champion. And I won the German championship in 2008 and then I thought, okay, I want to be the world champion. And mm -hmm. uh, I trained more and more and I lost in 2009 and 2010. I was second, it's still a very good result, but I wasn't happy about that. And uh, I wanted to be first and uh, prove myself somehow. So this, um, this was actually the way which I, yeah, which I used to become a world memory champion. A lot of motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of training, of course, mm -hmm. because without training it's not possible. So I sat down and trained every day. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I was used to stay, uh, get up early, train for some hours, and mm -hmm. try to modify my techniques, try to learn from my mistakes, try to um, improve myself in my weaker disciplines, and so on, to getting a big, a huge, great package, mm -hmm. and then trying to be cool in the situation when you are close to win it and uh, don't be nervous at the end yeah, so sure mm -hmm. hard and yeah and finally i did it yeah. my sheer applause dr thank malo you. thank you so much this is actually one of the reasons we are glad to invite you to our international project because actually you are a practitioner you're the expert you're not the person who is sitting somewhere in the laboratory and thinking about memory you're the person who using that knowledge in your really day life activity Thank you very much. And yeah. finally, one more question, please. 
Are we correct to say that contemporary representation, scientific representation of memory issue is not sufficient enough? There is, I think that the field is very, very huge and there is still a lot to learn. And mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned before, there is, yeah, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to know about memory and uh, about how memory works and how also about disease like Alzheimer's dementia and so on, how to solve these problems. Yeah, this is a big, big field, and I hope there are a lot of good people out out there and uh, doing this research stuff. Because mm -hmm. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not a research expert. I'm doing it in daily life, and I think I have quite success with that. Mm -hmm. But it's very important to understand the mechanics of memory, but also of memory memory techniques. And uh, if we learn more about that, we can improve our memory much more. As a matter of fact, today there are so many viewpoints, so many levels, so many models. They are scientific, they are just like the results of different uh, scientific discipline interaction, like neurophysiology, neuroscience, one model. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Freud's view viewpoint and Charles Gustav Jung's viewpoint, the other model. Yes, so I think that a model can be only a model. That was always the case. A model can describe processes in your brain, in your memory, in a maybe in a very yeah, clo very accurate way, but a model, at the end a model is a model. Mm -hmm. So you, with a model you can come close to the real process, but you will be never really there. You can come, try to come close as possible, mm -hmm. like the model of the, of the world, like the sun is in the middle of the universe or the earth is in the middle of the universe. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of models and everything was correct once. And then there was a new model and that would describe processes better than the old model, like mm -hmm. Einstein's theory in, uh, in physics or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there will be never a final model. I don't think that. Uh, but I think there will be a model which is very close to the real process in the future. Cool. Thank you so much, sir. Let's stay have in touch and have a nice time. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.